And there's a focus on two trials that are underway this week. Actor Jesse Smollett is trying to prove that he didn't lie to police about a racist and homophobic attack. And a former Minneapolis police officer says she thought she was using her taser when she shot and killed a man earlier this year. CNC's chief legal correspondent, Laura McNeil, is joining us now with a breakdown of what's happening in both courtrooms. Laura, thanks as always for joining us. Let's start with Jesse Smollett. How likely is it that he will be able to prove that he is innocent in this case? You know, as they say in Hunger Games, Laverne, the odds are not in his favor. Uh, you have video footage of the two alleged attackers actually buying the supplies prior to the attack. They have video footage of Jesse Smollett after the, the attack, casually walking up a flight of stairs, carrying the same Subway sandwich he bought prior to the attack. He didn't seem that shooken or, or frazzled by what had allegedly just happened. And then you have that $3,500 check that Jesse Smollett's defense attorney says, hey, this check was for training services and nutritional advice. Uh, the prosecution says no, it was payment uh, for this fraudulent attack. And so I think because you have two of the attackers that have turned state witnesses against Jesse Smollett, I think he's going to get a guilty plea. Oh, you think he's going to be found guilty, Laura. So do you think then he's going to go, you know, go to jail? And if so, for how long? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, the reality is he's not a, a criminal, meaning he doesn't have a criminal record. And so essentially because he doesn't have a prior record, that's what the judge will take into consideration. Uh, what he's been charged with uh, essentially is a felony for disorderly conduct, and that includes, of course, the false police report he allegedly filed. But it's only up to three years in jail, and he's likely, to be quite frank, to just get probation. Again, he doesn't have any prior record. He's not a threat to society. He's pretty much going to get a little pat on the hand. Oh, you think so? Because, you know, the question is why are prosecutors even pushing for a conviction in this case? And what message will it send if he's proven guilty? You know, this case really reminds me, and I'm kind of dating myself with this one, but Martha Stewart, uh, trying to make an example out of Jesse Smollett to prove a point that just because of your celebrity status, you're not above the law, and you too will be held accountable if you set up a crime, a fake crime, and then file a police report and waste the city's time and energy for something that really didn't happen. And so I think the prosecutor is trying to send a message in the city of Chicago, we will Will prosecute everyone, including a famous television star. Well, Martha Stewart came back to work with Snoop Dogg, and she's <laughs> living large, so you never know what will happen. Uh, but, Laura, what about those brothers in this case, uh, the ones who say this is all a hoax? Are they going to face any punishment for their involvement? No, but I could tell uh, Martha Stewart she might want to check them out. They might be a good cooking companion on one of her cooking shows. Yeah. But, be <laughs> but because they've turned state witness, uh, they made a deal, essentially. We will testify against Jesse Smollett in exchange for not serving any jail time. So uh, they are fine. They are against state's witnesses. And because they turned state witnesses, that's why I'm convinced that there will be a guilty verdict in this trial. Okay, so Laura, let's move on to the Kim Potter trial. How significant would a testimony from her be in this case? Uh, very significant. We remember in the Ahmaud Arbery trial, Travis McMichaels uh, getting up to testify. It was a last-ditch effort to try to save himself from a, a guilty verdict. And so it's very important in this case for Kim Potter to testify because she's got to convince that jury that this was not reckless, this was not negligent behavior where she, as she says, mistakenly pulled her taser instead of her firearm. She's got to convince that jury that this was an innocent mistake, and the only way she can do that is she has to get up on that stand. She has to be able to connect on an emotional level with these jurors, put them in her shoes, and show remorse for just how shaken she is by what she says was a very, very awful mistake. Will prosecutors be able to use race as a factor in the shooting? You know, based on the evidence we've seen thus far, I don't think so. There's no uh, evidence, again, that has been released of any type of racial slurs that were made uh, during the arrest or text messages. And so I think this is solely going to be a case based on the jury determining whether or not uh, Kim Potter's actions were negligent enough to warrant a second degree manslaughter charge or if it was an innocent mistake that was reasonable. And 
if they're not able to establish that, she will walk. But I think because she's a veteran, Laverne, it has 20 plus years experience. She's a trainer uh, or was a trainer on her police force. That's going to hold her to a higher standard where she should not be making those kind of mistakes at her level. And that's why I think we'll get a guilty verdict.